with the first pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the Indiana Fever select Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. Music to the ears of Hoosiers across the state. Caitlin Clark bringing her game and star power to Indiana. We look at how it will be a big score for the state's economy. Plus, Governor Holcomb drumming up business south of the border. Why Hoosier Ag and Bioscience are the big selling points on a trade mission to Mexico and Brazil. Ah, ah. And planting the seeds at an early age to fill Indiana's talent pipeline. These guys like those big trees. We'll show you how the Grow Up Great program is paying off in a big way. Inside Indiana Business is next. From Indiana's business news leader, this is IBJ Media's Inside Indiana Business with Gary Dick, presented by Elevate Ventures, Indiana University, and Lyona. The 2024 WNBA Drafts number one overall pick here to Indianapolis. Please welcome Caitlin Clark. Well, Caitlin is in the house. She's Indiana's now. Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. Indiana already feeling the Caitlin Clark effect. Ticket to sales and prices already off the charts. Her jersey selling out within an hour after the Fever drafted her. Clark made her Hoosier debut with the Indiana Fever during a jam-packed news conference this week with an appreciation for what the game of basketball means to the state of Indiana. Can't think of a better place for myself to start my career, a uh, place that loves basketball, supports women's basketball, um, and an organization that really does things the right way, um, has championship pedigree. So I'm just very thankful that they have a belief in me, and obviously my parents are here today. The Caitlin Clark effect, it is big. Mary Rachel Redmond joins us now with more on what she brings to Indiana. Well, Gary, Caitlin Clark's face is everywhere. Her coming to Indiana is the kind of blockbuster deal that happens once in a generation. She's big for business and for basketball. Think Peyton, Luck, and Reggie. That kind of big. Well, the NBA, WNBA draft, the WNBA draft is this Monday, and Iowa star Caitlin Clark is expected to be the number one pick. Here to comment is Caitlin Clark. <laughs> From Saturday Night Live to State shoot, Farm. Shoot. Okay, I'll shoot. Caitlin Clark, take it away. The confidence, the flair. She's already a force in pop culture. I saw, witnessed what greatness was all about. It's Caitlin Clark, best women's player of all time. A laundry list of celebrity fans. Everyone from Travis Scott to Ted Lasso. She will start as a drawing card for the WNBA, unlike anything they've had in the in the entirety of their history. It, 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 I know there's a lot of resistance to this notion, but people forget that the, the NBA needed that too. I mean, at one point, the NBA in the 80s was struggling to get its finals, its championship series on primetime television. And then along came the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson rivalry. Bird inside the score. College basketball is player of And when that happened, the NBA started to explode. And then when Michael Jordan came along on top of that. MJ, oh, he did it. Hey, Michael shakes the finger. It fully exploded. So having a Caitlin Clark is not an insult to the women's game. It's an opportunity. One that fans are clearly capitalizing on. Fever ticket sales are soaring. The average resale price for the 2024 season triple what it was just a year ago. And on sites like StubHub, floor seats going for as much as $1,600. And that's just for the Fever's preseason opener. Well, I think she's a great fit for Indiana. I mean, obviously Iowa right around the corner. So being able to watch and, and I think even for her fans, being able to have a lot of the Iowa fans drive over for all of her games, I mean, seeing the numbers that have been posted for her collegiate career, that will also translate to her professional career. WNBA teams across the league have seen an increase in ticket sales, especially for games against the Fever. It's even prompted teams around the league to find bigger venues to house more fans, ostensibly there, to see number 22. 
to be able to have a player like that, you want people to understand. You want people to be able to witness what she's going to be able to do. You want, from, from my standpoint, I want more and more people to watch the Indiana Fever. And so really being able to have that opportunity to go to different cities and have more people in the seats, more people watching women's basketball. I mean, let's just talk about the impact of Caitlin Clark. I know for me, the last couple of months walking around Indianapolis, really anywhere I go, people are asking, have you seen her? Have you watched her? Adding Caitlin, it's just, you know, it's just a, a different vibe. The fever's been down for some years, and now it kind of rejuvenate, rejuvenates the team, rejuvenates the city, rejuvenates WNBA and women's basketball. Great story, Mary Rachel. The Caitlin Clark effect already being felt and to break down the potential for tourism and business in Indianapolis. Pleased to be joined by Visit Indy Executive Vice President Chris Gall. And Chris, great opportunity obviously for the fever, but this is a big opportunity for Indianapolis as well. Absolutely, Gary. Mary Rachel, you think about what Peyton is still doing for our community, what, what Tamika is still doing for our community. Caitlin Clark is, is, is carrying this moment in our city and state's history. Look at the viewership, the national championship game, record setting, 18.9 million people tuning in. WNBA uh, draft night, record setting, four times the amount of people that viewed last year. And then you look at the Fever's uh, nationally televised game. Last year, only one. This year, we got 36 nationally televised. So you look at the viewership, and here she is, no longer a visitor, a resident of our city. She continues to say that sweet sounding word, Indianapolis, Indiana. She's, she's set here with all these brands like Gatorade and Nike and all, all these other brands wanting to attach into Caitlin. And we have the great fortune of having her in our community. Uh, meeting planners are predominantly female. Event planners, predominantly female. They're already calling to say, we wanna come watch her play. We already have ad campaigns running in Des Moines and throughout Iowa saying, come watch your number one player, now our number one fan. So it is definitely a tangible result from the Caitlin impact. Kind of to expand on that, she's the biggest sports star in the world right now. How do you market her from an Indianapolis standpoint? And she, yeah, that's a great question. And she's so indie already, family oriented, a good, clean, crisp brand. Uh, you see her on Saturday Night Live and pitching all these other major brands. We say, come to Indy with all these weekend games at the height of summer travel. All of these games are at the height of summer travel. So we've got digital ads in these markets saying, come watch her. And we're carrying that uh, momentum into, into the tourism arena. I have a feeling we have a lot more to do on this story in the coming weeks and months. Chris, thank you uh, for some great perspective. Mary Rachel, great story as well. Well, coming up next, robots roaming farm fields in Indiana. Indiana's global connection to high-tech agriculture and why the governor is in the Southern Hemisphere to promote it. Hi, I'm your retirement fear. But don't be scared, you're still in pre-tirement. Does that mean I have more time to plan? Precisely. Here, this is pretirement.org. Retirement savings options? <laughs> Potential tax breaks. Ooh. This isn't scary, I'm doing it. You got this. <laughs> Visit thisispretirement.org for free resources to help you customize your action plan. If you love them enough to drive an hour to cheer them on as they get beat 11 to nothing in the rain, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Throw that ball, Diane. Woo! You got this. Well, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb is just back from a trade trip touting the benefits of doing business in Indiana south of the border. The governor led a delegation uh, of Hoosiers to meet with business leaders and corporate executives in Mexico and Brazil, the main focus of the mission, building relationships in the ag and ag bioscience sectors. Indiana leaders looking to build on what is already a solid foundation. Trade with Mexico-based uh, companies last year totaled nearly $13.5 billion. Brazil, well, that number added up to more than $1.5 billion in 2023, and all more than 25 companies uh, doing business in Indiana. Since we were fortunate our way out of the forest and, and they out of the Amazon, et cetera. Uh, but to think about the sophistication in precision ag, in additives, in inputs, in, 
in uh, being able to grow in different climates, all that's being you know, researched and developed in places like San Paulo and Indianapolis. And so these connections, as they, uh, just like when people were out exploring the world in the 1500s, uh, we're still exploring those new frontiers, but we're leaders in it right now. And this also gives us an opportunity to get in the boardrooms, uh, chambers of commerce, and talk about other sectors as well. We got the governor uh, after a number of meetings beginning to lose his voice there. Uh, before he left on that trade mission to Brazil and Mexico, uh, the governor and the Indiana Economic Development Corporation gave a big boost to 15 regions all over the state. Northwest Indiana, one of the areas to get a big chunk of some $500 million in Ready 2.0 funding. The region nailing down $45 million, one of six regions in the state to get that much. How and where the money will be spent will be decided in May. Southwest Indiana, another Indiana region landing $45 million from the state in the Ready program. We were there last week in Evansville to kick off the first of this year's IBJ Media Engage Indiana series. Nearly 400 business and community leaders gathered on the campus of the University of Evansville for an event that was decidedly upbeat. I'm an Evansville native, been here of course my whole life. Uh, we've had a company here, headquartered here for 60 years. In all of that period of time, I can't think of a time that's more exciting to do business at Evansville, have a location here, and we look at all the opportunities that we have to change where we are and the trajectory of where we think we can go. This is a great time right now uh, to be, be here. Among reasons for the optimism, Southwest Indiana, one of six regions statewide, to receive $45 million, the most given out in ready allocations that will likely help fuel a long talked about riverfront revitalization. The thought of spending or investing some of that money, most likely in exciting transformative riverfront projects, not just in Evansville, but from the region from Mount Vernon to Newburgh, so 50 miles of riverfront revitalization. Meantime, redevelopment of the 420 main site, talked about since the demolition of what was Evansville's tallest building nearly three years ago, could be nearing. Once we unveil the riverfront, we're going to hear shortly after that we're going to break ground, I believe, on uh, 420 Main. Um, and again, it's been a long time coming, so we're ready, trying to fill in some of those holes downtown and keep things moving forward. And for nearly 400 business and community leaders from throughout southwest Indiana, assembled for our first Engage Indiana event of 2024, there was a palpable buzz about the return of air service between Evansville and Chicago. I would tell you that this single issue is probably the one issue I hear about from CEOs more frequently by far than any other issue. The loss of daily air service to Chicago and Detroit some two years ago caused concern that headquartered companies might flee southwest Indiana. Officially announced that we are restarting our service to Chicago. But months of negotiations that included the governor's office, Indiana Economic Development Corporation, and local business and political leaders convinced American Airlines to reinstate two daily flights to Chicago beginning in September. I travel to a lot of communities and, and see you know, what's going on from an economic development standpoint. And it was really impressive here in Evansville how everybody works together from the mayor's office, the state, uh, you know, Governor Holcomb, everybody pitches in together and that's the that's a catalyst for making things like this work, especially in tough times that the airlines are having now. A big win indeed for Evansville and Southwest Indiana. Our next Engage Indiana event will be held in Southern Indiana on May 1st. We will be in New Albany hosting business and community leaders from throughout the region. Uh, we'll be at IU Southeast for that event. Check the link below for more information on that event and our entire Engage Indiana series. When we come back, Indiana University getting a little slice of Hollywood. More on a new high-tech lab, AI, coming to Bloomington and its impact on research. And we're excited to announce our new Young Professional subscription discount, available for the first time, uh, for first-time subscribers to the IBJ and Inside Indiana business. College grads, young professionals can access this exclusive 40% discount at ibjmedia.com, Young Professional. 
is 988? It's a free 24-hour suicide and crisis lifeline. And it's a way forward. If you are experiencing thoughts of suicide or a mental health or substance use crisis, call or text 988. In four days! There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. Bye. She had so many children. She didn't know what to do. Did you have a good day at school? She gave them some broth. Without any bread. There you go. And kiss them all soundly. Night night. Good night. And put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Here's what's making news around Indiana. Brought to you by the Indiana Association of Realtors. Indiana's 21,000 Realtors. The neighbors you know, the experts you can count on. Time now to get caught up on some of the business headlines making news around the state. Here's Mary Rachel Redmond. Well, Gary, we begin with Indiana Biosciences offering hope for those suffering from critical diseases. The FDA giving Eli Lilly and Roche Diagnostics the green light to speed development of the two companies' collaboration on new blood testing. It's plasma biomarker test designed to help doctors identify one of the key features of Alzheimer's disease. It's a big breakthrough for Roche and Lilly, as there currently aren't any blood tests for Alzheimer's. In Northeast Indiana, expansion at Fort Wayne-based Do It Best, the company planning to merge with United Hardware out of Minnesota. The deal expected to grow Do It Best cooperative membership by 20 percent. Do It Best, the largest private company in Indiana with more than $5 billion in annual revenue. And a little bit of Star Wars production technology coming to IU. The university unveiling plans to create a new AI lab featuring an LED immersive soundstage. Kind of like this one you see here, it's called The Wall and will give IU faculty and students the chance to use virtual and augmented reality for research projects. Hard Truth Distillery in Bloomington preparing to roll out more barrels. Less than a year after cutting the ribbon on its second rack house, Hard Truth starting construction on a third. The facility will be able to hold 8,000 barrels of whiskey to bring the distillery's total on-site capacity to get this 20,000 barrels. Wow, wow. That, that a lot is, of whiskey. That is big, <laughs> and that success story continues really driven by demand. That's right, demand for their sweet mash whiskey, super popular. Yep. All right, thanks, Mary Rachel. Well, how many are there? <laughs> now there are two. PNC marking 20 years of its Grow Up Great initiative. We'll show you how it's preparing Indiana kids for success in school and life. The roar of the engines at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, only a few weeks away. Inside Indiana Business will be back at the track for the month of May to take you inside the billion dollar business of motorsports. Business at the Brickyard, brought to you by Gainbridge and Lyuna. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. What is 988? It's a free 24-hour suicide and crisis lifeline. And it's a way forward. If you are experiencing thoughts of suicide or a mental health or substance use crisis, call or text 988. I felt accomplished after I got my diploma made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. 
Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Time now for our Eye on Education, brought to you by PNC Bank. Well, PNC Bank is a longtime sponsor of Inside Indiana Business, and this week, we're showcasing an important initiative PNC uh, has been pushing now for 20 years. It's an early learning program called Grow Up Great, having a big impact across the country and here in Indiana. I wonder what I'm gonna do after school today. <laughs> As the Indiana business community continues its push for expanded quality early learning opportunities, the financial needs of caregivers continue to grow. Nina Woodbury has worked at Day Early Learning Center for infants and toddlers on the near west side of Indianapolis for nearly 14 years. Things are not getting less expensive and teachers are not making significantly more money um, and teachers who are dedicated to the work. Make sure you move your feet okay. Will many times spend their own money. They're not required to but they do it out of love and commitment to the children and Dollars only go so far. Any dollars that we can get is potentially making life better for the children we care for. You want to grab some bread? PNC Bank is this year marking 20 years for its Grow Up Great program, a company-wide initiative launched by then CEO Jim Rohr, focused on preparing children from birth through age five for success. Oh, here's some trees. You guys like those big trees? See those big trees? Books, materials, playground equipment, teacher training, and more. Nationally, it's a seven. It's a five hundred million dollar commitment, two hundred forty seven million of which has been already granted. Ten million kids have been impacted by this. Over a million volunteer hours. We actually have a program internally at PNC where we give our employees forty hours a year, paid forty hours to volunteer their time. That is translated into more than 5,000 volunteer hours and $2 million in grants in Indiana. Early Learning Indiana CEO Maureen Weber tells me private sector initiatives are planting seeds for filling the state's talent pipeline. You know, it's critically important, and we understand there's sort of a symbiotic relationship here. We are really serving a two-generational purpose, helping uh, supply today's workforce and at the same time um, train the, the workforce of 20 years down the road. And so um, we've really appreciated the businesses uh, like PNC that have recognized that and support our efforts as we make their work possible. PNC's Grow Up, a great program, a germ of an idea uh, launched about uh, 20 years ago indeed having a big impact across the country and here in Indiana. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Inside Indiana Business. We leave you now where we began with superstar Caitlin Clark. Go out and make it a successful week. With the first pick in the 2024 draft, the Indiana Fever selects Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. Can't wait, obviously I've played in Gilbridge a few times, so I know how amazing it is. I can't think of a better place to start my career. WNBA Drafts number one overall pick here to Indianapolis. Please welcome Caitlin Clark.
is 988? It's a free 24-hour suicide and crisis lifeline. And it's a way forward. If you are experiencing thoughts of suicide or a mental health or substance use crisis, call or text 988. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I'm your retirement fear, but don't be scared. You're still in pre-tirement. Pre-tirement? Does that mean I have more time to plan? Precisely. Here, this is pretirement.org. Huh. Retirement savings options? <laughs> Potential tax breaks? Yep. Boo. Oh, I could build up savings for my side hustle. This isn't scary. I'm doing it. You got this. Visit thisispretirement.org for free resources to help you customize your action plan.